Can you imagine a predator so successful that it has conquered almost every corner of the globe? Meet the grey wolf. Renowned for their strength, intelligence and endurance, which has enabled them to spread out and become one of the most dominant predators across the world. But did you know that not all animals we call wolves are actually wolves? For example, the maned wolf of South America looks like a wolf and sounds like a wolf, but isn't a wolf at all. So what's so special about wolves that animals keep evolving into them? Let's find out. The grey wolf is the most widely distributed terrestrial predator in the world, occupying so many habitats that 30 distinct subspecies have been recognised, that each differ greatly in colour, as a better way to stay camouflaged in their habitats. Like the Arctic wolf found in northern Canada, or the Arabian wolf from the deserts of the Middle East. Whilst found across North America, Europe and Asia, they never reach South America, Africa or Oceania. And in the absence of wolves, the predators of these regions have evolved into animals with very similar morphologies to wolves, in a process known as convergent evolution. An incredible phenomenon where unrelated species that don't share a common ancestor develop similar traits because they face similar ecological pressures. Animals experiencing convergent evolution are usually geographically separated from each other, but share a similar environment. However, in extreme cases, Convergent evolution can occur in the same ecosystem, like sloths, which are not as closely related as it seems, and evolve their slow-moving arboreal traits independently. Convergent evolution often produces striking similarities, including bats and birds with their wings, flying squirrels and flying lemurs with their parachutes, armadillos and pangolins with their armour, and moles, golden moles, and marsupial moles, evolving adaptations for a life underground. In the case of the wolf, many animals have evolved similar bodies, skulls, and behavioural traits, such as the thylacine, more commonly referred to as the Tasmanian tiger because of its stripy coat, which was a wolf-like marsupial, once native to New Guinea, Australia, and Tasmania, although sharing a common ancestor with wolves as far back as 160 million years ago. In Australia's isolation, they have evolved eerily similar characteristics, and despite its closest relative being the numbat, it's hard to believe that it's not more closely related to wolves. Serving as one of the finest examples of convergent evolution, its body shape was almost identical to that of the wolf, with both being streamlined and optimised for hunting. Both the grey wolf and thylacine have evolved jaws so powerful that they can snap bones like twigs, enabling them to immobilise their prey whilst preventing animals from escaping their tight grip. Their bites are both particularly effective when paired with their teeth, that are able to slice through flesh with surgical precision. The thylacine actually had a significantly stronger bite force compared to wolves, due to how unusually far it could stretch its jaws, although it was incapable of hunting prey any larger than an opossum. Though the thylacine's coat mirrored that of the tiger, its morphology was much closer to that of the wolf, with both acting as apex predators in their environment. Whilst wolves relied on the strength of the pack, the thylacine stalked its prey at night, before ambushing with significant force. It most commonly ate water birds, small mammals, and occasionally reptiles, using its agility and stealth. On the other hand, wolves use their endurance to take down large prey like deer and elk. One key difference, the fact it had a pouch, was the only significant morphological difference between the thylacine and members of the Canis genus, like wolves and jackals. Banished to the remote wilderness of Tasmania by 3,000 years ago, the thylacine fought a losing battle against invading dingoes. This long drawn out war continued to one fateful day in 1930, when the thylacine was seen for the last time, although it may have persisted for much longer. Upon British colonisation, bounties were set for thylacines, who were deemed a threat to the sheep industry, and within a relatively short time, the 5,000 remaining thylacines on Tasmania were killed. And so, with the final breath of the last thylacine, the world lost not just a species, but a very distinct lineage and one of the finest examples of convergent evolution. Although in Australia, a marsupial evolved to fill the niche of the wolf, in Africa, it is hyenas that evolved to become like wolves, and today have spread out and can be found across Africa, Western Asia, and India. At first glance, it would seem as if they are closely related to dogs and wolves, but they are actually much more closely related to cats falling into the same clade as mongooses. Hyenas originated 22 million years ago in the dense jungles of Eurasia. These early hyenas would have resembled civets and were tree dwelling, but as these animals dispersed out of their forest habitat and into savannas, they evolved longer legs for running and stronger jaws for hunting. And around 15 million years ago, hyenas split into two groups, bone-crushing hyenas and dog-like hyenas. 
Over time, the dog-like lineage dwindled, with only the insectivorous Eidwolf surviving today. However, these bone-crushing hyenas were far more successful, becoming the dominant scavengers across Eurasia and Africa. Among them was the formidable giant short-faced hyena, a massive predator weighing up to 200 kilograms that was capable of shattering elephant bones up until its disappearance 500,000 years ago. Though hyenas often scavenge for food, they are also skilled hunters. Like wolves, they have strong and muscular bodies, but are generally more robust than wolves, and less suited for agility, as they don't need to have as much endurance. For this same reason, hyenas have much shorter tails as they don't need it for balance. But what truly makes hyenas so successful isn't just their physical strength, but their strength in numbers. Both wolves and hyenas live in complex social structures, allowing them to defend themselves from larger predators and hunt animals that would otherwise be too big for a single animal to hunt. Within both wolf packs and hyena clans lie strategies refined over millennia that enable them to orchestrate hunts with military level precision, with each member performing its specific role perfectly. Both animals are also very territorial and defend themselves from rivals and have sophisticated communication. Famously, hyenas are known for their laugh and wolves for their howls and barks. A long time ago, North America was a much colder place with a large number of huge herbivores living alongside one another. And no matter the case, animals will adapt to their environment. In this case, becoming larger to deal with the larger prey. Meet the dire wolf, not actually a close relative of the wolf, being most closely related to jackals, evolving to become a much more powerful version of the wolf, with the strongest bite force of any placental mammal, which assisted them in hunting North America's megafauna, like mammoths, ground sloths, and bison, reaching an average weight of 68 kilograms, much larger than the 40 kilogram gray wolf. Like the gray wolf, the dire wolf also lived in packs, which were probably larger than wolf packs today. Like wolves, they would have also honed their problem-solving skills under relentless evolutionary pressure, leveraging rivers and cliffs to corner their prey. As I just mentioned, it wasn't a wolf, sharing an ancestor with wolf-like canines over 5.7 million years ago. And the similarity between the grey wolf and the dire wolf is yet another example of convergent evolution. Dire wolves are often blown up to mythical proportions, but in reality they were just bigger, stronger, relatives of today's wolves. The dire wolf eventually succumbed to extinction after the large prey it depended on started to disappear as a result of the climate's warming at the end of the last ice age as well as human activity with the last dying off around 9,500 years ago. Possibly the strangest animal we'll cover in this video is the maned wolf whose long slender legs, to put it lightly, give it a peculiar appearance. It is the biggest canine in South America. It's not a wolf though, despite what its name and appearance suggest. So what is it? The maned wolf is highly distinct from any other species, with its closest living ancestor, the Falklands wolf. Again, not a wolf, sharing a common ancestor with it around 7 million years ago, leaving the bush dog as its closest living relative. All South American canines have descended from a single ancestor that had a population of around 11,000 and reached South America over 3.5 million years ago, with the lineage containing the bush dog and the main wolf splitting off 3.1 million years ago. Funnily enough, the bush dog has the shortest legs and the main wolf has the longest legs, despite being closely related. These adaptations allow bush dogs to burrow easily and maned wolves to navigate tall grasslands. Despite having many adaptations in common with the carnivorous grey wolf, the maned wolf plays a significant role in seed dispersal, being an omnivore. But unlike wolves, they are solitary and crepuscular, meaning they come out at dawn and dusk. Its prey consists of 178 species of birds, small mammals and reptiles, who the maned wolf tricks into leaving their burrows by tapping its feet on the ground. However, most of its diet consists of plant matter such as sugarcane, tubers and fruits. The maned wolf isn't the most successful predator, as only 21% of hunting attempts result in success, often jumping to catch birds in flight, digging into burrows and chasing its prey. Evidence also suggests they eat bush dogs, armadillos and anteaters. Out of the plants it eats, the wolf apple is the most important, usually making up 40 to 90% of its diet. Since it grows throughout the year, it remains a constant food source even in the dry season. The maned wolf has a unique symbiotic relationship with the wolf apple, where both have evolved to benefit each other. The wolf enjoys a tasty, calorie-rich fruit, while the apple's seeds are spread far and wide. Maned wolves often defecate on the nest of leafcutter ants, and the ants use their dung to fertilize their fungus gardens. However, they discard the seeds onto piles just outside their nests. And whether the maned wolf realizes it or not, this process greatly increases the germination of the seeds, leading to more apples in the area. As it is not an apex predator, and therefore not at the top of the food chain, maned wolves occasionally become dinner for jaguars. 
It is also wary of people and typically flees the moment it sees them. This fear has deep roots as the main wolf has long been hunted because people believed, although there was no proof, that it preyed on livestock. Their habitats have been severely damaged over time as a result of extensive road networks cutting through the large areas necessary for their survival. Sadly, these roads claim the lives of a great number of maned wolves a year and have led to them being classified as threatened. So now that we've explored wolf-like animals across different continents, hyenas in Africa, the thylacine in Australia, and the maned wolf in South America, it's time to turn our attention to islands. Historically, wolves once roamed Great Britain and Japan, and New Zealand doesn't have any native land mammals, leaving just three island regions, the Caribbean, Madagascar, and Southeast Asia. In the Caribbean, Apex predators have all but disappeared, with just a few left today like crocodiles. Southeast Asia, however, is home to the dole, an animal that has filled a similar ecological niche to wolves, but they are not really an example of convergent evolution, as they are a somewhat close relative of the wolf. Turning to Madagascar, we can see that there is only really one apex predator, the Fusa. Despite its somewhat feline appearance, and its initial classification as a cat, the Fusa is now classified in its own family, along with the Malagasy civet, Malagasy mongooses, and the Phalanook. There was once a giant Fusa, twice the size of today's species, but it was driven extinct by humans not too long ago. The behaviour of the Fusa contrasts with that of wolves. It is both diurnal and nocturnal, solitary, and does not typically hunt in groups. However, it may have occasionally cooperated in hunting larger prey, such as Madagascar's extinct giant lemurs. Like wolves, Fusas use a wide range of noises for communication. Its dietary flexibility allows it to thrive in the many habitats across Madagascar. Its diet is primarily composed of lemurs, but it also eats tenrex, reptiles, and birds, showcasing its adaptability, much like the wolves in their varied environments. Across the world in the United States, the ivory-billed woodpecker, which was one of the largest and most magnificent woodpeckers in history, hasn't been confirmed alive for 80 years, but numerous sightings since then have challenged the idea that it's extinct. Click this video to find out more, and subscribe so you don't miss my weekly videos. I'll see you next time.